Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Kevin Element. I'm a professor of multimedia production at Confederation College, uh, primarily teaching um, motion graphics at the moment, and I'm looking specifically at Flash. Uh, today, the screencast is meant to help our students to learn a little bit more about what buttons uh, can do and how do we animate buttons. I'm going to go through some drawing styles and hopefully show you some interesting ways to make your interface elements a little more attractive. So I've already started with a new file here and what I'm going to do to start off is to create a button that looks somewhat 3D um, and give the illusion to the user that this is some kind of control that they can push down. So here I've got the oval tool selected. I'm going to start by picking a gradient just to get started from the swatches palette and I'm just going to drag out a circle holding down the shift key the entire time to constrain uh, the height and width. And then I'm going to quickly hop over into my gradient transform tool. I'm going to move this off to the side a little bit and scale it out. And instead of going with solid black, I'm just going to change on my gradient um, the right color to a, to a slightly lighter but still dark uh, black. I might actually at this moment add a third color into my gradient and attempt to create a specular highlight on my on my on my circle. So I'm just going to zoom in here and make sure I'm looking at something that I like. I've got a little specular highlight there that I enjoy and now that I'm working in vector graphics I'm just going to make sure that I group this object up. I'm going to copy it, and then I'm going to paste it in place, and then with my free transform tool I'm just going to scale this up just a little bit. Whoops. Let's scale this, holding down both the option key and the shift key. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm just going to zoom up a little bit here so we can see what's actually happening. So I've got one object on the exterior that's grouped up. It's the first gradient object that I created, the second one that I pasted in place, and now with my free transform tool, I'm just going to rotate this, holding the shift key so that it snaps to 45 degree rotation increments and then let go. And the illusion is quite nice. It looks like an attractive button that's beveled on the edge. It's got some specular highlights, so it, it alludes to something that's a little shinier. Now, I've got to consider my housekeeping, so I'm going to go up to layer one and double click on the name and call this round button. And selecting both of the objects, I'm just going to right click and convert this to a symbol. Now, I've got to be careful here, I'm just going to zoom up so we can see. And I'm not making a movie clip from this, but instead a button. A lot of programmers prefer to use movie clips as buttons, but there's some sneaky tricks that I want to show you inside of the button symbol. I'll give this a meaningful name. So round button is it'll appear in the library. Okay, let me just zoom back out here. Now that I have a symbol on stage, I'm simply going to double click on the object. And we can see up here in the timeline four states. We've got up, over, down, and then this hit area. And I'm just going to quickly duplicate this keyframe from the up to the over. I'm doing this by holding the option key down as I click and drag on the keyframes. So now I've got artwork living in the up state, the over state, and the down state. I'm going to treat each one of these uh, objects on stage here independently. I just want to take the time to point out as well to be very mindful of this breadcrumb trail that's that's living here. Um, we can see quite clearly by this icon that I'm orbiting about here that we're absolutely working inside of the round button. Um, if I click on the objects that are on stage, we're still only looking here at a group. So what I want to do is make this thing into a movie clip. Make sure I grab the two objects, right click on it, convert to symbol. Over time you'll learn the shortcut keys, but in the meantime I'm just going to do this really quickly. And I'm going to say that this group of objects that I've selected would be a movie clip. 
give it a meaningful name. So I'm going to call this round button up. Okay, and now that this is a movie clip, I can access the filters panel down here in the bottom right of my interface. And I'm just going to add a new filter to this, to this and, and, and make a drop shadow. I'm going to make some changes to my properties here a little bit. I'm going to reduce the strength down to 50% or so. And I'm going to decrease the blur X and blur Y parameters just so make this a little sharper and change the distance down to probably three pixels. Awesome. Now, I wanted to do this first because I want this movie clip in the upstate to be completely independent from the overstate. So if I toggle into the over right now, I've still only got a group out here on my stage, where in my upstate I've still got a movie clip. So I'm going to treat each one of these groups independently. So I'm going to click on the overstate. I'm going to turn this now into a symbol round button over. And toggling between the two frames, I'm going to try to create the effect that when the user puts their mouse on this button that it's going to glow. So now I can select in the up state the object. I'll show you a quick shortcut for moving filters around. I'm going to zoom down into the filter panel here. And I'm just going to right click on the drop shadow or left click on the drop shadow filter and then down below I'm going to very carefully watch my watch my tooltips and there it is. There's clipboard, presets. So I'm going to copy this to my clipboard and I'm going to copy select it. Jump over to my overstate, select my movie clip, back down here to my clipboard, and say paste. And that's going to bring the drop shadow over to the new movie clip that was generated in the overstate. All right. Um, just to give it some life now, I'm just going to double click on that object on the stage just to get inside of its timeline. I want to animate a glow on this. In order to do that, I need to take these two objects and yet again create another symbol. It's going to be a movie clip. I'm going to call this one round button over glow. Make sure that it's a movie clip. Everything looks great. So I'm just going to add about 40 frames or so here. Um, and make sure that this is a classic tween. Now some people might be wondering why are you using classic tweens. You know, some of our students might be going out into the world uh, working with Macromedia Flash MX or some of the earlier versions of Creative Suite that didn't have uh, the latest and greatest uh, shape tween um, that's built into the newest versions of Flash. So I'm just going to stick to classic tweens for this example. Uh, so I'm ready to animate. And my object in the first frame here, the round button over glow, I'm just going to apply a filter to it. So I'm going to give this a glow. I'm going to choose a color like, I'm going to go with a fluorescent yellow something really bright. And I'm going to keep the blur down at around one pixel to start. And then holding the option key, I'm just going to duplicate this keyframe all the way down the timeline at frame 40. And then somewhere in and around frame 20, I'm just going to right click and insert a keyframe and click on the object on the stage again and we should be able to change the blur x, y so that it really looks like it's glowing and maybe even up the strength if we're allowed to. Yeah, let's make it even stronger. I'm going to make this 200% just to just to emphasize my point here. All right. Go back to our round button. We've got the overstate, upstate, we've got the overstate. And down in my down state, I'm just going to create the illusion that <laughs> the user's pushed this uh, button down. So I'm just going to grab these two bits of art, nudge them over five with my arrow keys, and down five. And then just test this thing up. Command return, mouse over. There's the glowing that I wanted to see. And when I press, it looks great. <laughs>